Hello friends, welcome to Study Time channel and in today's video I will be discussing the general studies prelims questions which were covered in the 2003 prelims exam of UPSC civil services examination and in this part I will be covering the geography questions which were asked in the 2013 general studies pre. So let's begin with this. So these are the questions and I will be dis discussing them one by one and you will have to think an answer for it okay so this is the first question for you consider the following pairs so these are the national parks and these are the rivers which are flowing through that park okay so the first one is Corbett National Park option is Ganga Kaziranga National Park river is Mansa Silent Valley National Park river is Kaveri so the question is which of the following above pairs are correctly matched so you have to think from these four options so the if I talk about the rivers which flow through these uh, national parks without the Ram Ganga River there would be no Corbett Park okay so it is the largest of the precious few perennial sources of water in the park in fact from 1954 to 1957 the park was also known as the Ram Ganga National Park later on it was re renamed as the Corbett National Park so this one Corbett National Park this one is a wrong option so Ganga doesn't flow through the Corbett National Park okay then Diflu, Diflu, Diflu River flows through the Kaziranga National Park okay so the Mansa doesn't flow through the Kazi National Park so this one is also wrong and this one is also wrong then Kunti Puza River flows to the Silent National Park so the Kaveri doesn't flow through the National Valley Park Silent Valley National Park so which one flows through the Silent Valley National Park it is Kunti Puza River hence all the options which are given here are wrong so the answer will be D the none okay then move on to the next question Narbada River flows through the west while most of the other large peninsular rivers flow to the east why so these these are the questions actually which were covered in 2013 and also I have been wondering about why the Narmana river flows to the west and the rest of the river are moving towards the eastern side so the options it occupies a linear rift valley okay? then it flows between the Vindhyas and the Satpuras the land slopes of the west from the central India options these are the four options okay when I talk about the Narbada and the Tapi rivers which flow in the geological faults that means what are the geological faults they are the rifts created between the two ancient mountain ranges okay and the, the two mountain ranges are Vindhya and the Satpura okay when the Indian plate moved into the Eurasian plate they arise to the Chota Nagpur plateau in the east of the Deccan Peninsula and the gradient is down into the Arabian Sea in the west while in the Deccan that means to the south the gradient is from west that means at the height of the western Ghat to the east into the Bay of Bengal and there there the rivers flow east hence that means the statement one which one this one statement one is correct even though statement two is also correct but that is not the reason for the Narmada to flow the west okay so the accurate answer will be this one option one that means it occupies a linear rift valley system okay next move on to the next question consider the following pairs okay so no crack biosphere reserve garo hills loktak lake dafla hills and nam dafa national park dafla hills which of the above pairs is or are correct so you have to choose from these four options when I talk about the no creek national park or the no creek biosphere reserve it is a national park located approximately two kilometer from the Tura national peak okay that means from the uh, west Garo Hills district of Meghalaya India so UNESCO added this national park to its list of biosphere reserves in May 2009 okay then if I talk about the Loktak Lake the largest fresh water that means sweetest lake in northeast India also called the only floating lake in the world due to the floating pumdis okay that means heterogeneous mass of the vegetation soil and organic matters at various stages of the decomposition that means on it 
is located near Moirang in Manipur state, India. Okay. Then I have talk about the Namdapha National Park. It is located in Chandlang district of the northeast state of Arunachal Pradesh and it is near its border with Myanmar. The park is located between the Dafa Bum range of the Mimshbi Hills and the Patkai range with a wide altitudinal range between 200 meter to 4570 meters. Okay, so the answer will be A. Okay, so this one is the only right answer. That means no Creek Biosphere Reserve falls in the Garo Hills and rest of them doesn't falls on these two hills okay so the one will be the answer question number four which of the following is are the characteristics of the indian coal so what are the characteristics of the indian coal you have to answer from these three options that means it has high ash content low sulfur content or low ash fusion content okay so india has some of the largest reserves of coal in india Okay. or and in the world Indian coal has high ash content and low calorific value the average ash content in Indian coal is 35 to 30 35 to 38 percent okay. so this is the average ash content okay. then Indian coal is characterized by high ash content that means low sulfur and low moisture content lower washability index lower liberalization size so due to this peculiar problems in Indian coal, there comes the need to go for importing of the coal. So that is why the India is importing a lot of coal from outside and they have to depend uh, lesser on Indian coal because of this uh, bad qualities of it. Because the majority of the Indian coal have high fusion temperature. So this A, 1 and 2 is the accurate answer. That means Indian coal has high ash content and low sulfur content so this is the answer for the question number for the next question variations in the length of the day and night time from season to season are due to that means the length of the day time and we talk about the night time it's from season to similar mean during the winter time the night time is longer and during the summer season the day time is longer then what is the reason behind it we have to choose an option from these four given options First one is the earth rotation on its axis, the earth revolution around the sun in elliptical manner, latitudinal position of the place, revolution of the earth on a tilted axis. So there is a variation in length of day and time, night time from season to season. Because the earth is tilted as 23.5 degrees Celsius, we all know about it, take we have seen the globe and it's orbiting the sun. Different parts of the earth are nearer to the sun, making it seems higher in sky or lower in the sky. Closer you are to the equator, less of a difference there is in the length of the day throughout the year. By the December 21st, the northern hemisphere is tilted as far away as it can be, making the days shortest in the northern hemisphere and longest in the southern hemisphere by June 21st. We all know that. Northern hemisphere is tilted at the maximum towards the sun and the longest days are in the northern Hemisphere. So the D, because of the revolution of the Earth on a tilted axis, we all know we have seen the globe, okay, and we have seen it, and the Earth is tilted 23.5 degrees Celsius, and it is due to the revolution of the Earth on its tilted axis, the daytime and the nighttime are always different and in different seasons. Okay, next question, question number eight. On the planet Earth, most of the fresh water exists as ice caps and glaciers. Out of a remaining fresh water, the largest proportion. Okay, we, have, we all know that key on this planet Earth, the fresh water, most of the fresh water is found in ice caps and glaciers. But where does this remaining fresh water remains? Okay, where it is found? And you have to choose an answer from these four options okay when i talk about the fresh water it is naturally occurring water on the earth's surface in ice sheets ice caps glaciers icebergs bogs 
ponds, lakes, rivers and streams and underground as groundwater in aquifers and underground streams. Okay. And out of all the water on the earth, salt water in oceans, seas and saline groundwater make up up to 97% of it. Only 25 to 2.75% is fresh water including groundwater and soil moisture and less than 0.01% of it as surface water in lakes, swamps and rivers. So the sea, okay, and the rest of the fresh water, okay, uh, largest source of fresh water are ice caps and glaciers in the rest of the groundwater, fresh water is found in groundwater, okay, so Okay, then move on to the next question. Contour bonding is a method of soil conservation used in. Okay, so you have to find an answer from these four options. Desert margins, liable to strong wind action, low flat plains, close to stream courses, liable to flooding, scrub lands, liable to spread to weed growth and none of the above. So, Contour bundling, that means contour bundling you can also say, involves the placement of lines of stones along the natural rises of a landscape. Okay, Then it helps to capture and hold rainfall before it can become runoff. It also inhabits wind erosion by keeping the soil heavy and moist. Contour bundling is associated with terracing to check the flow of water on a hill slope in order to reduce soil erosion. Okay, Then terracing and contour bundling across the hill slope is very effective and one of the oldest method of soil conservation. They divide hill slopes into numerous small slopes, checks the flow of water, promotes absorption of water by soil and saves soil from erosion and none of these options are correct. Okay. All these four options are incorrect. So the answer will be the D, none of the above. Okay. Move on to the next question. The most important fishing grounds of the world are found in the regions where if you are fond of fishing, okay, so you, this question is for you and you have to answer the important fishing grounds. So these are the four options. Okay? So the answer will be C. Warm and cold oceanic currents meet. Okay? So when warm and cold currents meet, dense fog is formed. Okay. Reduce visibility is dangerous for ships. We all know that. And on the other hand, such areas are ideal for fishing. A fishing bank is a shallow sea area which abounds in fish. Cold currents bring abundant fish food called planktons from colder, poorer areas, and this supports large fish populations. The Grand Banks in Newfoundland, the Dogger, and the Great Fisher Bank in the Northern Sea are major fishing grounds where warm and cold currents meet. So, sea is the answer for this question. The next question, which of the following is or are unique characteristics of the equatorial foreheads? Okay. So, you have to tell about the characteristics out of these three given options and you have to answer from these options. Okay. So, when I talk about the equatorial forest, so equatorial in what happens in equatorial forest, the first layer is ground layer and the fourth layer is canopy layer tall trees grow so close together that their crowns interlock to form a continuous canopy which blocks out the sunlight in forest. Hence, one is correct. So, this one option is absolutely correct for it. Like vegetation and animal life in the equatorial regions is also found in abundance and variety. There are an immense number and variety of insects. Okay. So, the example like uh, butterflies, termites, mosquitoes, pyrotics, ferocious, Diverens, okay, and sissy flies, okay. So, large number of species. So, this equatorial rainforest covers large number of species, and I have named some of them. So, this two is also correct. Let's talk about this third option. Assemblages of large epiphytes occur most abundantly in moist tropical forest, but mosses and lichens occur as epiphytes in almost all biomasses. Okay. So, presence of numerous varieties of epiphytes. So, this is also a correct option. So, answer is D. 1, 2 and 3. All of them are correct. Move on to the next question. 
consider the following cotton groundnut rice wheat which of these are the kharif crops so you can answer it very quickly what are the kharif crops so kharif crop refers to the planting cultivation harvesting of any domesticated plant sown in the rainy season on the asian subcontinent okay so the kharif crops are usually sown with the beginning of the first rain in july and during the southwest monsoon season okay so in india the kharif season varies by crop and state with kharif starting at the earliest in may and ending at the latest in january but is popularly considered to start in june and end in october fine so now i am going to tell you about one of the uh, some of the common kharif crops millet bajra cotton sorghum jowar maize moong bean that means green gram sugarcane guar arhar or tul pigeon pigeon pea you can say urad that means it's called as black gram peanut groundnuts sunflower soya bean rice is the main kharif crop so wheat is a rabi crop okay so the answer for this question is c 1 2 and 3 cotton groundnut and rice these are all kharif crops and wheat is a rabi crop okay